Hello everybody and welcome to another Arkham Horror List video. Do not adjust your speakers. Uh, I do sound a little bit messed up. I'm currently, I, I, I finally got it. I don't know if I can say the word in the first 30 seconds of the YouTube video. Otherwise we get demonetized. But you know what I'm talking about. It's kind of been like the in thing for the last uh, two and a half years pretty much. I think it's only been two years. I don't know. Time is, it's all just a freaking joke. Anyways, Brynn and I are here today to talk about six house rules that you should try playing with uh, to kind of maybe to spice your game up, to make it a little bit easier potentially, to make it a little bit harder, or to just like even just make things a bit more interesting. I've not played, I've only played with some of these house rules here, but these were the ones that I came up with off the top of my head. Uh, and if there's other things that you think would be good, please let me know down in the comments and I might steal them for a future one of these videos. So why don't we dive in? and get this one going. And to our first one here, which is, this one's pretty simple. This one is play on stand hard. Now this is one, Bryn, that you actually uh, introduced me to. So what is this play on stand hard kind of house rule? Uh, so this one is if you want, uh, you want a game that's a little bit more difficult than standard, mm -hmm. but you don't want to play on hard because it is a bit of a kicking. Mm -hmm. uh, so what you do is you either play with the normal token bag and the hard encounter card mm -hmm. or scenario card or vice versa, the hard encounter bag, but the standard scenario card. Mm -hmm. It makes the game a little bit harder to play without being quite so brutal yeah. as, uh, as hard can be. Yeah, and this is, um, honestly, I think this is actually kind of the new difficulty level that, like, we should probably play at when we get a new <laughs> campaign because the card pool has gotten so strong and we're, like, pro gamers at this point. Yeah, but it, I think it's a great way because uh, on standard you can still try to, like, keep your, uh, the idea of being up two on a test if you have the standard bag, but then you have actually, like, much harder symbol tokens, which is... Uh, a nice little difficulty bump without being like crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to playing like when you're actually playing on hard and you have to try to avoid drawing tokens from the bag any yeah. at any time. Yeah. Uh, this still lets you, uh, you still got some room to play around with uh, cards in your deck. You don't just have to sit down and try to build the best possible deck that you can. Yeah. Yeah. You can play with cards that are just for fun. And, still. and that's my favorite part of the game. Still being able to play just like junk sometimes. Just for fun. Um, this is actually something that we accidentally did the first time we played Innsmouth. Uh, we played the first <laughs> scenario halfway through with the hard encounter card and the standard bag. So it's very doable. It's very doable. Yeah. All right. Next one here is draw three basic weaknesses, remove one, and draw one at random. So this is something I've never tried, but it seems actually like pretty good. A pretty good system to... Uh, Say, for example, you're building a, a rich Jenny deck, and then you get the car, the weakness, you just draw the random weakness, and it's the one that uh, makes it so that you, you lose all your resources. So you could have either planned for that, you could upgrade into that, because there is ways. Brins have, Brin has told me the strategy to beat that card. Or alternatively, if you don't want that to happen, you could draw three basic weaknesses, remove one, and then you draw one of the random two remaining weaknesses. This still gives some variety, but allows you, for you to basically veto uh, a weakness that would be particularly bad for your deck. Or, as the example that we have here, Doomed, which is just, uh, pardon my French, but a little bit of a shit-kicking. It is just kind of a not, not a fun card. Yeah. This is, um... One that I've actually, I've seen a lot of the times people say they have removed it completely from their weakness pool. We still, I still have it in mine. I never get it though. I've played with it once <coughs> and it was, uh, it was, I didn't die. So as far as I'm concerned, the weakness is easy. <laughs> have you played with it? Have you, have you had it as a basic weakness? No, never. But, uh, it is one of, uh, like when I'm playing with my family, Yeah. I will usually not count that as one of the cards yes yeah it's, it's because it is it is very much like we're here to have fun and this card stops somebody from getting to really play the game and i think that's actually like the best part of why these house rules exist is because if the goal of this game is to have fun you can modify it to be more fun without like 
breaking the game. I think this is a really good way of going about it. And mm-hmm. also, as on this point as well, Doom doesn't feel like a basic weakness. It feels like a pinpointed, targeted weakness <laughs> that wants to break your legs. So Yeah, yeah. if you're playing yellow, watch out. Yeah. Can you imagine <laughs> rolling this in an Amanda Sharp deck? You're like, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna die. Uh, time to get rid of all them skill cards, I guess. They had a, a new version, which was like the offer you can't refuse or something like that, where you have to pay money into it. Um, and I think that was a much better version because this really has, this has very little counterplay and this house rule can provide some counterplay to it. If you don't want to just remove it from your pool altogether. Yeah, yeah. Personally, I just play the, like if I've rolled a, random weakness that i really don't want to play with mm-hmm. am i okay with taking overzealous instead yeah yeah that's a that's because a just... uh no matter no matter what you've rolled overzealous is probably worse in general terms yeah so you could just um, you just swap them out yeah just like this one this one cripples my deck or i can't play the game with this card in my deck i'll play overzealous instead because it's still you know it's probably the next worst weakness I could roll. I like that. That's that's also a good house rule. The overzealous thing. Just if you don't like your weakness, yeah. and you really don't want it, just replace it with overzealous. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh just that way, like I know I'm not gonna ever try to abuse it because yes. I really don't want to have overzealous in my deck. There was actually a time too where I sometimes re-roll my weaknesses if they're not a problem. So like I I got like the uh the one that damages you if you deal damage to an yeah. enemy as being yeah, the toxic. macho one. Yeah, and I'm like, no, I want to actually have fun in this game. And then I drew the thing that follows, and I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of, some of the weaknesses do definitely, like, they don't do anything at all. Mm-hmm. And that's where I think, yeah. what, I think this, should, this could actually, even if this was an official rule, that would be really sick, too. I think this is, like, it's clean enough. It offers some choice, but you can still, you draw, like, doomed overzealous and then like some other bad thing and you're like well i guess i'm getting rid of doomed and have a 50 50 shot of an overzealous and i think that's it's still very fair all right up next number three we have deck build with stipulations or limitations this is something that we do all the time on the channel um this, uh, I have Cunning Distraction here for the card, just because it was there for both of our draft challenge, and then also the event-only channel challenge that Britt and I are currently... <laughs> we have finished recording it, but it is currently coming out on the channel. Um, Boy, are you guys in for a treat. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> that is the example of, like, it keeps the game fresh. So this one's a very minor house rule, because it actually doesn't change anything within the game itself. It just gives yourself a smaller card pool to play with, which is a little bit more interesting, especially when you've been playing for as long as we have. And then also what is fun for it too is that uh, like we had our first, I think our first challenge run we ever did was all guardians. And you really crack open your card pool and the investigators when you provide these li- uh, limitations to your decks. Yeah. Yeah, this one's nice and easy. Not much to say about it, but Brent and I are going to be recording a new challenge run today with some uh, stipulations, so that's going to be fun. It's always just just try it out. Trust me, it's a, it's a really good time. All right. Next one here, we have swap level zero cards between scenarios. So this, I think, is best for when you're just starting out. Um, Like, that you can just, like, between scenario one and two, and even, like, two to three, you can swap out level zero cards if you you put in something that you didn't think was working. Now, this is the reason why Bryn loves Adaptable so much, (laughs) which I realize now you should have, I should have had on the screen. It's a very good effect, but I think especially when you're playing with new players, if they built their own decks, it can be really good for them to have this option to swap cards out. I know when we were playing with the old release format, when they released a Mythos pack every every month, Travis would let us swap level zero cards out with cards from the new pack if they fit our deck better. And like, that's not really a thing anymore, but it, it's just a good way to ensure that you're like, can do it like a few times just for new players to let them focus their deck. Or if yeah. you want to make this official, just let everyone buy adaptable. Because <laughs> that card is sick. It is sick. Yeah. 
Yeah, I in general these days I only try to do that if I have purchased an adaptable. Yeah. Because yeah. I know most of the scenarios well enough to know what level zero cards will be better than other ones. Yeah. Uh, and I will definitely abuse that if I can <laughs> have the option. Yeah. Yeah. So I I don't I don't give myself that choice. But uh, like if I'm playing with somebody else and they're they picked a level zero weapon or something and they don't like it and they want to try a different one like mm -hmm. sure whatever do it yeah yeah it's all good but the second you start swapping in fine clothes and i'm out of here that's yeah. when you got that's when you got to start paying but yeah yeah sweet all right next one here number five this one's pretty simple and it also will come up very rarely but defeated, defeated Investigator replacements come back with the same XP value uh, as the deck that they are replacing. So this doesn't happen too commonly in a, uh, in a campaign, but sometimes an Investigator dies, or they go crazy, and then they're done. And then the player who was playing them needs to build a new deck to uh, take over that Investigator spot in the party. Um... And I believe, and I'm like I'm not 101 percent sure that you have to build it at level zero. Um, but what you could do, and this is something I've seen people say, and I've even thought like this would be a good idea, uh, especially for new players, is that they come back with the same XP value that the deck before had. The the deck you could have it so they gain the XP from the scenario, or you could just have it be the deck that as it was defeated. But this is a good way to ensure that, especially for new players, it feels less bad when there is defeated investigators. I personally, I'm a masochist. I love when investigators die, and I like starting with level zero decks. Uh, I went into a final scenario with a level zero Lola deck, and it was a draft, and it was a great time. However, <clears throat> not everyone's like me. So this can be a way to beat that and allow that player to still feel like they're contributing without feeling like they lost too much. Yeah. Because I remember yeah. there was one time, Bryn, when you and I both got eliminated in a certain campaign, and it really sucked. <laughs> when we both had to uh, change our game plan to different seeker investigators for that one. You know, yeah. sometimes you just don't make it out. You just don't make it out. You have a much higher batting record, it though. It's <laughs> much improved. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, I mean, I've also started playing cards like I'm out of here. In my yes, decks. yeah. You're now, uh, yeah, yeah. Get those adaptables to get the I'm yeah. out of here. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Just to make sure that uh, maybe we get to maybe we get to leave this scenario. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, our final house rule for you to try out, this one's also really simple. Modify the chaos bag as you see fit. These actually exist in the form of ultimatums, where you can add another elder sign, add another auto fail, add another zero, add another even like a minus three, right? Like if you're looking for a little bit of a difficulty increase, that's not crazy. Just throw in another harder difficulty modifier into your bag. This, the campaign already does this, and it's just a good way to bump up the difficulty without going like over the top if you want that little bit of an increase of difficulty and if you want it easier add a zero add, don't you could add another elder sign but like that's uh that's like really nice that's like christmas comes early but hey it's your game if you'll have a better time doing it why not right yeah yeah add, add extra elder signs add extra extra auto fails yeah uh, auto fail every test it'll be sweet there's a video um I, I think it's I, I uh, let me see if I can find it without breaking this video. I think it's a uh, it's another oh I just broke the video. I press space. You're not uh -oh. supposed to press space. That's okay. I can just go back like that. Look at that. But like they played uh I I think I think it might be Pax Cecilia, another content creator. They played um uh the the party guest one in carcosa the last king with wendy with, with wendy adams and a bag full of auto fails or something like that uh, <laughs> which seemed like a good time and my apologies if i totally got the wrong uh youtuber for that but it's a great video and if you haven't seen it you should check it out but it's possible i, I would love to try one where we add another uh 
We add another auto fail. Just for fun. I promise I don't need a second one. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty good at no, honestly, we just you add bless tokens and that's another auto fail for you, Bren. That's how that works. Yeah, add bless tokens, play Rex Murphy. You always have to pick the cards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, that was this uh, week's list video. If there's any other house rules that you play with, let me know in the comments. I would love to read them, uh, interact with you, and also maybe steal them for another one of these list videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.